Importantly, Ekman transport also generates this phenomenon known as upwelling. Upwelling is defined as the upward flow of, of deeper water towards the surface. It has a counterpart called downwelling, which is the downward flow of water from the surface towards the depths. It's this upwelling that generates the most productive regions of the world ocean, and that's why we're studying it. We're finally coming to a link from this chapter to the link of food webs. But upwelling, as I said before, is responsible for the most productive fisheries in the world ocean, so it deserves our attention here. It's caused by wind generated Ekman transport. When that movement of winds causes water to move 90 degrees to the right on either side of it, then that causes surface waters to diverge and causes upwelling. Let's see what that looks like. Along the equator, we have the east to west trade winds and 90 degrees to if this is east and this is west, if we think about 90 degrees, then it's towards the north in the northern hemisphere. If we think about 90 degrees to the left of the wind in the southern hemisphere, then that's towards the south. So as wind blows along the equator, some of the water is going north, some of the water is going south, and to replace that water that's diverging on the surface, we have to have upwelling. And this is the explanation for equatorial upwelling. If you go back to the sea surface temperature maps that we talked about in last chapter, you have upwelling colder water along the equator in the Pacific Ocean because as the wind blows across the Pacific Ocean, the part of the Pacific in the southern hemisphere is moving towards the left of the wind and the part in the, southern hemis in the northern hemisphere is moving to the right of the wind and it's causing tr uh, upwelling along the equator. And here's what it looks like on a world ocean basis. Here you see colder tongues of water. Now the colors are kind of reversed here. We usually we use the pink and purples for uh, warmer waters. In this case, the, the, the coldest waters or colder waters are in red. The pinks and purples are the hotter of the water. So this is the hottest water. This is a little bit colder. Here you can see upwelling in the, Atl in the Pacific Ocean. Okay, and a little bit here as well. So we see tongues of upwelling in both the equatorial Pacific and the equatorial Atlantic. Again, because of poleward directed Ekman transport, because of surface divergence and colder water coming up to replace it. Well, here's a figure that's wrong in the book, and you should check the errata in the book uh, on, on, the, on the, my website to get the correct figure and I'll post this as well on uh, my class website for, so for my class but if you want to make sure you have the correct figure then just email me um, if you're not certain if you have the right one or not but this is a little bit different than the one you're going to see in the book and you'll see why obviously here in a few minutes. If we have a wind blowing from the north so if the wind is blowing from the north then in the northern hemisphere the water is going to move off towards the right and if it's blowing down the coast of California then it's going to move offshore and that's what's depicted here it's moving offshore towards the west so winds from the north because of Ekman transport are causing water to flow off towards the west and it's creating upwelling and this upwelled water and again this is just a diagram that might probably doesn't isn't this shallow this upwelled water is coming from fairly shallow depths. It's not coming from the bottom of the ocean, but it's coming, importantly, from depths beneath the photic zone. It's coming from depths where phytoplankton haven't been growing. And because it's coming from depths where phytoplankton haven't been growing, that means that water is full of nutrients. And as that upwelled water reaches the surface and mixes with surface waters, those surface waters become replenished with nutrients and as we'll explore in chapter 14, those nutrients lead to a bloom of phytoplankton. So that's why we're really spending some time on this phenomenon of upwelling because it's an important process in ocean productivity. So again, wind blowing from the north, 
when wa surface waters directed offshore, upwelled waters replacing that water. And you'll note here too, because that water is moving offshore, we have kind of a tilt in terms of the slope of the sea surface. All right, so this is the phenomenon of upwelling. And I would expect you to be able to fill this out were I to remove all the arrows and just give you this background here as well, if you actually understand it. Downwelling is sort of the opposite. So here we have a wind from the south. And again, to the right of the wind is towards the east along the coast of California. Now we're piling up water on the coast and that piling up of water is creating downwelling. Now this downwelling um, isn't going to be as intense, so to speak, as upwelling because now you're trying to push water down. It's easier to draw the water up from the surface, but in fact, it can also be an important process. This basically shuts down biological productivity because it really pushes surface waters deeper and it really doesn't have a corresponding biological effect other than that winds from the south are going to reduce productivity along the coast. But same kind of thing. Ekman Transport directs waters onshore. We have a slope of water upwards onshore and we have movements of surface waters deeper. This is called downwelling. We can go back to this image that we talked about uh, previously, that we saw previously in the previous chapter, figure 910. And again, here we see colder water moving offshore. We can surmise that on the date that this satellite image was taken, we had a north wind blowing along the coast of California or a north west wind blowing along the coast of California, pushing surface waters offshore and causing the upwelling of colder waters off and up to replace those surface waters moving offshore and creating this phenomenon of upwelling. You can even see a little bit of upwelling along this point here and along this point here. And so all these little points that are sticking out are also perfectly positioned to take advantage of, in a sense, the winds that are blowing perfectly situated to generate conditions that are favorable for upwelling. So points often have lots of upwelling associated with them as well. So here we can see a north wind blowing, creating upwelling off the coast of California. And as we'll describe and talk about in chapter 14, this has enormous implications for productivity off the coast of California and for how food webs operate. Upwelling also can cause, uh, st storm systems can also cause upwelling as we talked about earlier. So here we have a hurricane. Remember winds uh, from a hurricane moving in a cyclonic direction. That is going to cause surface currents to actually move in Ekman transport in this direction. Okay, so, and it's hard to get 90, it's hard to get arrows that go 90 degrees to the direction of the wind, but in fact, because of this, because of the movements of, because of Ekman transport, we're going to get divergence in a cyclonic system, and it's going to cause doming of the thermocline and cause upwelling at the same time. Low pressure systems like this, whether they a low pressure system over the ocean or whether they're even a hurricane, actually are generating a type of surface divergence and generating upwelling. So these can also enhance ocean productivity in the regions where they occur. If we look at the opposite, an anti-cyclonic wind or a high pressure system, we can see that Ekman transport is directed inwards. It leads to currents that move in an anti-cyclonic direction. It actually causes a doming up of water and creates downwelling. It depresses the thermocline. These regions tend to be oceanographically desert. So persistent high pressure systems over a particular region of the ocean will actually make that more desert-like, whereas low pressure systems can actually enhance upwelling.